CataractCoach.com, you must learn SICS, extracapsular cataract extraction, a manual way of removing the whole nucleus. We've got two surgeons in this video. I'm the first surgeon. Here we go. This is in Beverly Hills. This is a patient with a tremendously dense cataract. You see, there's no red reflex, no matter what. And this cataract is incredibly dense. The patient should have had surgery 10 years ago. Let's start off by making our incision here. There's that half-depth scleral groove, a couple millimeters behind the limbus there. I tend to make this straight incision as opposed to a curved one. Now using the crescent blade. And in this SICS technique, we're going to make a funnel here. So the inside opening of the incision is going to be a little wider than the outside opening. And so we don't want to penetrate the eye just yet. You want to keep that tunnel. The key in the surgery is that incision is so very nicely shelved. And this incision being so shelved really seals a whole lot better. The old style manual extra cap surgery that I was taught 25 years ago using corneal scleral scissors to the right and to the left, that really has no place in my surgical toolbox anymore. What we do now instead is this SICS technique. So now entering the eye with the keratome, there you go. So now the entrance is only 2.75 millimeters wide, and now we've got to create a rexus. Really important. Do not make a small capsorex in this eye. A minimum is going to be 5 millimeters, and even 5.5, 6, even 6.5 millimeters is okay, even if it won't overlap the optic. The catch is you've got to get this big, huge nucleus out of the bag. And so here we go, nice and easy. There's the Rex. You can see just how opaque this lens is. It is incredibly dense. Now, could I fake it and chop it? I could, but is it the best thing for the patient? Is that the best thing for the cornea? This patient's endothelial cell counts on the lower side, and we hydrate the lens, get it out of the bag. There it is. It's partially up out of the capture bag. And then we're going to use up a, a lot of viscoelastic here. So the whole nucleus now is up in the AC. We can push more viscoelastic, make sure the entire nucleus is above the capsule, above the iris. Here comes a lot of viscoelastic, and I have one magic trick to teach you here. If you're going to do this, let me teach you my trick. Make a paracentesis right there opposite. And now, more viscoelastic, watch the technique, injecting more viscoelastic on top of the nucleus to protect the cornea, and then to really pressurize it there. Now the bag is, or the anterior chamber is very highly pressurized with viscoelastic. The nucleus wants to come out. So I'll put this spatula here. This is a lens loop. On the other side, I'll just use my chopper, and I'll push that nucleus, and look at that. Boom, deliver it right outside. There's the nucleus. Now let's show you a real master at this surgery. This is Dr. Pradeep Mohanta from India. Now, in India, SICS surgery is far more common than it is here in the USA. And a big advantage is that it's a quick, efficient surgery that doesn't require a lot of expensive equipment. And it, it's really quite good for these patients with very dense cataracts. So, so you see the conjunctiva has been opened there. A little pyridomy, a little cautery. Making a groove here now that's about half scleral depth. And he prefers this technique. And then using this blade... We're going to now make that tunnel. So watch the same technique using this crescent-type blade going back and forth to really get about a half scleral depth um, beveled shelf incision. So this incision is the key to the whole surgery, and it's why the incision seals well. You'll see at the end of this case, despite being a large incision, Dr. Mohanda is going to close this with just two sutures in the sclera. So now continuing that tunnel, and then notice how, again, the internal opening is going to be wider than the external opening. And that funnel-shaped incision really helps to deliver this lens out. And so this lens will be easily delivered. A little more cautery to touch things up here. And now, here we go. Making another paracentesis here. And, of course, you need a rexus to be performed as well. And there's the air bubble, tripan blue dye. You know the routine here. And again, key, big rexus. Do not make a baby-sized capsule rexus. Because the baby-sized capsule rexus is going to make life very difficult for you. You want to get that nucleus up out of the capsule bag. So there's our viscoelastic going inside the eye. This is HPMC, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. That's why it coats the cornea so easily. And now, the rexus. Rexus time. Holding on to the globe here, zooming in. 
And again, remember, at least five millimeters. Here's a nice generous rexus, pushing it around with just the cystotome and completing it. And again, this is a patient with a very dense cataract. And I'll tell you, this patient's going to end up with great vision. The patient's going to have 20, 30, 20, 40 vision on post-op day one. So now, enlarging the incision um, slightly and then opening it all the way. So now the incision is wide open. More viscoelastic, that's the key here. Above the nucleus, behind the nucleus. Make sure that nucleus is on top of the iris, on top of the capsule. There it is up top. And now the lens nucleus can be delivered. And so the technique here is going to be a little different than my technique. It's just brought right out or burped out with that viscoelastic pressure. In my case, I did a smaller um, incision perhaps, and it required a little bit of a push. That's why I used that chopper. That's my trick. Now, I don't perform a tremendous number of these types of surgeries, SICS surgeries. In my patient population, it's unusual. Maybe once or twice a year for me um, in my private practice and then with my residents at the county hospital, maybe once or twice a month. So cleaning up everything with that Simcoe through the side port looks great. Time to put the lens in. So viscoelastic filling up the capsule bag in. Here's their lens. This, is, this looks like a single piece PMA lens. You can certainly put in a non-foldable lens because you have such a nice big incision. So once that goes in, make sure it's in good position. Dial it into the capsule bag. And this is a, traumatic, uh, a tremendous and a dramatic transformation of vision for the patient. The patient's going to go from such minimal vision to really good vision almost immediately. Now here at the end, we're going to close up that incision. Now some people do SICS without a suture. In this technique here, Dr. Mohanta is going to place a suture. I personally do place sutures in this incision. To me, it's a little bit safer, a little bit less risk. And so also probably a little bit better astigmatic results. So here's a cross stitch and tying that up. And this patient's going to have a really beautiful outcome. Actually, it looks like two interrupteds then, so not a cross stitch. So there's one suture. Here's the other one being tied up as well. Get those knots buried to keep your patient comfortable. And you want to have good tension on this, but not overly tight. You don't want to induce a lot of astigmatism from those sutures. Now, does SICS induce more astigmatism in the long term? Sure, but this patient had a barely count figures, maybe even a hand motion cataract. Believe me, this is a huge improvement. So closing the conjunctiva looks darn good. And again, we're going to then close the conjunctiva and even have a post-op picture for you. The post-op picture is going to be great. Here we go, washing out that viscoelastic again with the Simcoe. And notice how everything stays in place. There's no iris prolapse. The incision's really sealed beautifully with just two sutures. And then at the end here, post-op day one, let's take a peek. Looks great. Clear cornea, happy patient. You got to learn this technique. This technique is so important. Even if you only perform once or twice a year, it's something you need to be able to do.